Jays. Oh. Okay, here's our starters. So who? Hopefully, I'm gonna be warned when I'm on camera again because my shirt's half off. You won't be on Anytime camera if we can soon. help it. Perfect. Because that would mean they've got to come. <laughs> who's who's libero tonight? Um, Is Grace, Grace Nelson. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then that's why she doesn't have a star by her name on these. Correct. Lola Weideman for them. Yep. Okay. I think she's a junior. So, do you know how they will set up? Just looking at it, do you know how they will? No. So Van Ekren will start tonight as a setter? Yeah, obviously. so, well. Well, she'll, in that rotation? Up, oh, right here. Yeah, so okay. she'll start in the. So give me one, one through six. Back row. Van Ekren, Reinhardt, Davis. Snowy streets of Omaha, Nebraska, the home of the Creighton Blue Jays, inside the Wayne and Eileen Ryan Athletic Center and DJ Sokol Arena tonight. Volleyball action coming to you as the 2-0 Creighton Blue Jays, number 14 in the nation, take on the 0-2 South Dakota Coyotes. Hello, everybody. I'm Jake Ryan along with Kate Elman tonight for what should be a pretty good match. You look at those records, and it's not reflective of the type of team that you're going to see tonight from South Dakota. Uh, they had three extra sets last week that went to the extra points, Kate. And you look at what they are able to do last year, 31-3 and three overall. I'm expecting to see a bit of a competitive match for the Jays tonight. Now, you look at the setter position for the Blue Jays. They're coming in with a – Coach Booth is mixing things up this year. The young, Allie Van Akron. The – well, we won't call her old. Mahina Buha, <laughs> the transfer from Arizona. And both of those young ladies getting a chance – to make a difference for the Jays this year. The passing, obviously very critical for Creighton Blue Jay Volleyball. Absolutely, I mean, Allie Van Akron, coming as a sophomore, she is doing it all for the Jays. She's hitting above a 600, eight kills on 13 attempts and zero errors, averaging well over 4.6 sets per match. She's, you know, being very productive, and Mahina adding to that, you know, being a veteran senior, senior coming in um, as a transfer. They're, I mean, they're doing well together, creating offense for the Jays. Absolutely, and of course, two different passers means two different types of sets coming to the hitters. We'll see how the Jays adjust on weekend number two coming up and we'll see if South Dakota can adjust as well coming in at 0-2 should be a great match tonight from DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha Creighton Blue Jay Volleyball on its way on Jay's video Creighton Volleyball brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, together tastes better. DJ Soak Lorena Jays getting ready for tonight's match against South Dakota. It's the first of two where they'll take on the Coyotes this weekend, a Sunday road game up in Vermilion. And of course, I did the math on that, Kate, as it, the, the distance between the two, 135 miles between DJ Soak Lorena and the Sanford Athletic Complex that they play in. So a short drive up I-29 and you're right there. I was gonna say, that's a lot shorter distance than I would have anticipated. Yeah, and I, if you're curious, both are rated 4.7 stars on Google rankings. Wow, <laughs> I'll have to take my next vacation there. 
She's Kate Elman. I'm Jake Ryan getting set for tonight's game. Let's get your starting lineups. First for the visitors, the Coyotes of South Dakota, Amy Adams, Sammy Slaughter, Madison Jerkins, Madison Harms, Maddie Weidenfeld, Lola Weideman is the libero tonight. And of course, Elizabeth Chunky is who we're going to be talking about a lot for the Coyotes. Absolutely. Last, last season, I mean, she's ABCA all region, all region freshman of the year. There's no way she's not productive for the Coyotes today. You get your J starters in just a moment as Kostelak big swing. Opening point, good rally so far. Zimmerman, a little dink over the net. And that's enough for a 1-0 Jays lead. Here are your starters for the Blue Jays. Allie Van Ecker, we talked about in the pregame. Kiara, or excuse me, Kiara Reinhardt, Keely Davis, Kostelak, Grace Nelson at the libero tonight. And here is Kostelak back to serve for the Blue Jays. Dig on the near side by Grace Nelson. And now over the top comes Zimmerman, South Dakota. Pairing Jays again, trying to dunk it over. And the Coyotes are ready. Just out of the reach of Erica Kostelak, and it's tied at one apiece. That was a great swing. You can tell already the Coyotes are looking to go to their ABCA all region junkie. She, I mean, she's averaging well. I think 94 attempts in just two games already. So look for her to be a big key for their offense. Summit League Player of the Week last week. Sends it over. Zimmerman and the Jays will push it over and the Coyotes will set up on the attack. Big swing to the back row. Billy Davis there, a big swing for the Jays. Can South Dakota save it? They can. Nelson will start it. Goes behind her to Reinhardt. Reinhardt, one of those freshmen the Jays are so excited about. Another point for the Blue Jays. I really like what I'm seeing from both sides of the defense. That's always a good attitude for, you know, a good match. Attempted block, but too much on the push by Zimmerman. Now she's back to serve. <laughs> the top, nice job by Nelson. Coyotes with some big swings early. And Jayla Zimmerman. Just a little miscommunication there. Um, it was, I mean, it's a set in between. You couldn't really tell if she was going to set it for the back row or for uh, Kiara there on the right side. You'll see Ellie Bolton has joined the Jays in that back row. And here's the libero. Lolo Weideman serving for the Coyotes. Far side. Another dunk over, and the Jays have utilized tonight another point on the home team's scoreboard. 3 2. Kiara Reinhardt. Freshman out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. A little bit long on the serve. Jay struggled with that last week as well, so I think that's something that I know KBB, Coach Booth, wants them to get better at. Clean up the service errors, and that's one thing that she said was, as far as what you want to do better, that was not quite the main one, but she did focus on that area. South Dakota, boss. Hickman with the big windup. Especially when it comes to that serve, I mean, it's like a free throw. It's a, it's a free point if you can get over the net. It absolutely is. Jays with another one. Here's the replay. It just catches the inside of the boundary marker on the far side. Here's Mahina Pua'a. Transferred to Arizona from across the river at Iowa Western Community College to play with her sister, Emmy, from Hawaii. Pua'a, excellent server. South Dakota coming back the other way, and they leave it short, and the Jays will build a two-point lead. I have seen him be having some trouble getting out of our service rotation. And since it over, Weideman is there to set things up. Nelson in the air, Davis across. And a 
Great block coming from the hands of Sammy Slaughter. Talked about her previously, a couple years in Nebraska. Jay's actually, she was in the recruiting for, for Creighton. I mean, Kirsten was after her, and he ultimately decided to go to UNL. So I hear, I mean, that was a great, well set up block. Uh, middle blocker just closes perfectly. I mean, that's a big wall to try to get through. Back and forth between the Jays and the Yotes. Kostelak, nice touch, left it in no man's land over the block. Those tips are gonna be a key cog for Creighton's offense today. I, I think I've seen already three out of our six points have been tips that have fallen. 6-4, Keely Davis, all everything last year. I don't think she gave any, anybody a chance to win Biggie's freshman of the year last year. Pua uh, sets up Hickman and it's another big kill for the Jays. Jays playing really, really good defense right now. They are not letting anything hit them more. It's making it very, very difficult for South Dakota to side out. Fans in the building tonight, excited, of course, to have even a smattering of cheers for you. A little bit long in the serve, but we talked about it. It's so weird to play basically a closed scrimmage with no fans in the building, even for the 50 or so people that are here. It's nice to hear the noise for players. Absolutely, for players, for coaches, even for us sitting over here, it's nice to have at least a little bit of a chatter in the crowd. I know that's, any, that's the only thing that these players want, is to be able to play in front of a few family and friends. Just off the fingertips of Pua after South Dakota had set it up. Hickman trying to play that angle initially, but South Dakota, nice job, as Weidenfeld will be serving again for South Dakota. Davis to Pua. Zimmerman has a big pace. swing. And now there is Hina dumping it across. Again, if I was South Dakota's coach, I would be very unhappy with the middle of my court right now. That's the one place that you're not supposed to be letting the ball drop. And Williamson in her seventh season with South Dakota. She and Coach Booth for the Jays, one and one all time against each other. Ball just off the outstretched arm of Hina Pua. 8-7. South Dakota trying to find the tying point here early in set number one of tonight's match. in that primary red tonight. Jays with the white, of course, aside from the liberos. Nice soft set. Able to bring it home off the attempted block by the Blue Jays. That was a great power through by Harms. I mean, Reinhardt was there, and she just didn't get her hands all the way over the net. Fell right in front of him. Lee Harms, of course, one of six top returners for this Coyote team. They're shy of pair of players that helped out with their 31 and 3 season point to the Jays and they'll go up 9-8. There's Kirsten Bernthal Booth 18th season. Feels like just yesterday she was named the head coach for the Jays. And of course, she has got them on a run and you know what they say, Kate, it's it's easier to get to the top than it is to stay at the top. But she's done a nice job of maintaining very successful consistency for the Blue Jays. Oh, absolutely. She brought this program from you know, having a losing season to now making the NCAA tournament and lead eight runs. Zimmerman across South Dakota counter, Grace Nelson. There is Van Eckren with the set. Davis, Van Eckren. Back row, nice save by Bullweg. Rally, here comes a big swing just out of bounds and a point to the Oats. Ooh, that looked into me. I looked in by a long shot. Substitution for the Blue Jays. It'll be Ellie Bolton coming back in. And there is the challenge from Coach Booth as we see the replay. That looked well into me. I'd give anything for a few games to have one of those replay cards or challenges. Well, you can use use them at your leisure, but you only get three of them. Of course, it goes five, you get one additional. 
think that started in what, 2017, 2018? You I would, never got the chance to. You would know better take than that. I do, but technology in arenas has improved drastically. Kate Elman and the official review, and there's the zoom in. If anything, it looks like at least caught that line, and yep. anything, That's any needs. part of that ball that touched that line, it's in. Maybe they should do it with chalk, so that way there's some evidence, <laughs> like like in baseball or softball. I thought it would be cool to have one of those, like a court that has like neon, it's lined for like neon, and like if the ball's out like or a, in, like it'll, a, it'll like bl blink up red. That'd be cool. I thought you were gonna go with like, it would need a black light to be seen. <laughs> the ball hit the court great shot by our Jays video crew yeah you're right that view especially looks like it's right on the line I think it got it such a hard swing here it is again Davis across it just so fast there the official pretty sure he's right there on it but it sometimes the ones that are closest to you are the hardest ones to see sure them. Have to put the radar gun on that one. Here it is <laughs> one more time. Swing. Davis with the big right-handed swing. She's got a heavy arm. I think that the other view, I think, is more clear that it's hitting the line. Mm -hmm. This obviously is the one you want to see, and that's as low as it can get. I think they're overturning it, but that's just my opinion. Right now, the score stands nine apiece between South Dakota and Creighton Blue Jays. Of course. These moments are usually big momentum swingers, too. Like, there's yeah. a reason that they're calling, you know, I think that was our point. So this can switch the mood of either team. So a huddle by both teams right now, and it serves as a kind of a timeout to reassess, getting that chance to do it. And here's the official. Stays with South Dakota. And I kind of agree with the assessment from our producer Joe Wilming. Inconclusive. It was it was hard to get that view from the camera that was that the ball was coming at. Yeah. That's the one that you were looking at for clear evidence. So South Dakota will get back to work. Elizabeth Junkie. Last season for Elizabeth, 520 kills for South Dakota. And she of course is there focus player this season. A little bit long, but Van Eckert is there to put it across. Van Eckert going back corner. Again, good response by South Dakota. Nice block at the net. South Dakota, big swing. And Ellie Bolton was there. Van Eckert putting the ball over on two. Yes, I agree with. I do think it needs to be done in a more aggressive way. Anything that has that loop on it, you want them to throw that ball down. Anything that's got that hide on it, it's more like a free ball. Bolton this time will set it up. Van Eckren, far side. Zimmerman, and the touch by South Dakota. And we are tied again at 10. Good back and forth. Jays topping Nebraska-Omaha in the season opener one week ago, and then taking out former conference rival, you and I, Northern Iowa, on Sunday. This is the first of two straight with South Dakota. It's the first of two in a row against the same non-conference opponent for the first time since 2011. That serve seems to be a thorn in the Jays' side. Again, early in the season still, despite having played six sets, trying to get that game participation level in. A little shy on the swing by Davis, leaves it short. And South Dakota has built their biggest lead. Granted, I was never a hitter, so I can't speak for the people neither, that hit. Neither was I. Exactly, but that's a tough ball. As someone who puts those balls up for the hitters, that's a tough ball to swing at, especially when it's coming over that shoulder at you. Along with the serve is Weideman, and the Jays will take the point and side out. Here comes Kara Reinhardt. Coach Booth talked about getting her behind the ball coming in said she has a tendency to play under a little bit when you, and when you have that tendency to play under the ball um, it, you have that also tendency to you know hit things long all the time if you're behind the ball you're coming absolutely through the ball and on top of it and giving that ball more power and down not giving as much room to play 
Matty Johnson in for South Dakota back to serve. Freshman out of Potter, Nebraska, went to Sydney High School. And in front again. Sets up Hickman. Yotes coming at you. Great save by Zimmerman. Another one by Bolton. Zimmerman up to Davis. Big swing touched, and South Dakota can't get there. Nice job by the Blue Jays, keeping it alive, and then good defense to set up the point. They are touching absolutely everything. Again, making it hard on South Dakota to try to get a ball down. They're making them have to really work for every point that they're getting. Emmy, or excuse me, Hina Pua, her <laughs> older sister, Emmy. Familiar with those girls. And Mahina, excellent server, leaves it just in the space of Weideman. Nelson, Kostelak, close to the net, dumped over, and it finds its place. And it's 14-12, South Dakota. That was a really well-placed center dump. She, you could, she could, you could see that she could tell that everybody was crashing to the middle of the court, and so chucking it right behind Grace Nelson was a great, great play. Set awareness, Sammy Slaughter. The ball wig. Coming through the ball. On the back set, nice dump over. Left South Dakota something to hit, though. Great block at the net by the Jays. Big swing, and it's touched on the block attempt. And it's 15 to 12, South Dakota. First time they've been here since 2018 in the NCAA tournament, and look at that swing. Just too much. Just nicking Davis's right hand. So a 2018 NCAA tournament. I asked you earlier, Kate, if you came into this game as a fan, and you said you weren't sure. Let's check the highlights from the last time that the Yotes were in town against the great Blue Jays. Taking this one 3 0 in a much contested match. It was a fun time here at DJ Soap Arena. If you were a Jays fan, obviously heartbreaking if you're a South Dakota fan. There's Coach Booth celebrating as it was a lot of smiling faces on that day back in 2018. I kind of wish I was there. It looks like this place was rocking. There's Naomi Hickman with the big swing. And of course, Jaylee Winters. Jaylee Winters. In that game, it was All-American Terran Cloth, South Dakota native that led the Blue Jays. Hit 696. Taryn to is pace now the chase. playing beach volleyball at LSU. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you? You get you get a little bit of scholarship money, you get to you get to go somewhere tropical. Heck, I rolled around in the sand for a little bit and I didn't regret it once. And what was the what was the weather like down in what what city is that in in Central uh, Arkansas? It's called Conway. Okay. Um, iffy weather. I remember practicing in sweatshirts and headbands for the snow. I also remember not being able to keep my feet cold. Hickman and big swing hot. as Pua -a sets her perfectly, and the Jays come back with it. And so so it's a lot like playing sand volleyball in the fall and spring in Omaha. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I remember watering down our courts after every two plays because the sand was so hot. Keely Davis is set. Sends it low. Nice hit, and it was just enough. Got the antenna and is in on the side of South Dakota, but out on the side of the Jays. So it's actually a really smart play. Pushing it off of the blocker's hands right into that antenna. Well, gets that. And you see right there Zimmerman just watching it to see where it went and the reaction a little bit slow and is able to score the point. New server in. It is Evelyn Dietrich. And the Jays will score the point. It's a great back row attack, something that I think the Jays have really improved on in the past few years. Big teams, big you know, powerhouses, they're good at out-of-system balls. They're never going to give you a free ball. 
Grace Nelson, senior, is ready. Jump serve. Up and over. Great dig again by Pua'a. Davis from the back row. Nelson, Pua'a, Reinhardt. Unable to get any power under those swings, and South Dakota able to respond. Great dig on the back row again. There's some power, but South Dakota again responding. A little bit over, and what a hit by South Dakota's Elizabeth Junkie. Had to reach back and just comes across and keeps it right inside the out-of-bounds mark. And that's a sign of a smart player, knowing she didn't have a good set to put her in a good position knowing exactly where the Jays defense are, putting it in a spot where nobody's at, taking a little bit off of it. That was a well, well, well played swing. Four and a half kills per set last weekend for Junkie. Maddie Jurgens, 73 assists in that opening weekend against Wichita State and Missouri State. Down at Hammonds in Springfield. Another point. And South Dakota increasing this lead late at 18 to 14. Blue Jays, a pair of 3-0 sweeps last weekend. They haven't faced any adversity yet this year. UNO kept it close and they handled UNI pretty well and that ball into the net. And the Blue Jays catch a break. Not yet, but you always want to see that challenge earlier in the season. Know how your team responds to it and be able to work off of what you're where you're at. Big serve and nice. Sent it far back enough that it became questionable for Balwick and she couldn't handle it. The ace. So serve right at your chest. You know, you're trying to decide if it's in or out. Those are always the toughest balls to play. Again, leaves it mid range that time and another ace for Costalek. Great job changing their distance and a timeout for South Dakota. One, <laughs> one point away from tying this one back up. A three-point run for the Jays. Erica Kostelek serving well right now. We'll see if she can continue when we come back. A one-point lead for the visitors. This is Blue Jay Volleyball, Jays video. South Dakota, one point lead. Excellent serving uh, for Erica Kostelak on the last pair. Has brought the Jays back. And Kate, we were talking about it off air. Some people can handle changing the serve distance, and some people can't. But Erica Kostelak showed it perfectly. And, and tell us about that. You, you want to make it look the same off the hand, correct? You want to make it look deceptive. So you want to make it look like it's going to hit that player in the chest again. So it's a difference between going all the way through the ball and popping the ball to give it that drop. See how far she goes on this one, trying to tie it up. 18-17, the Yotes in the lead. South Dakota at 0-2, trying to get their first lead, or excuse me, their first win. And the Jays will have a chance. Zimmerman finds it. Great pass, and it's tied at 18. It's a great swing by Zimmerman. You can tell during this match, she has mixed up her shots a lot. It's hard to decide as a defender you know, where you want to go if they're tipping it, roll shutting it. So Kostelak three straight after the Jays sided out. Back the net, nice block on the far side by Zimmerman. And some help from Reinhardt. And now Reinhardt gets a piece and puts it down. Coach Booth also talks about her handling the middle load. 
She handled it well there, assisting, and then coming up with the solo block. Kostelak has given the Jays the lead, 19-18. Big swing. Leaves it short, and here it comes. Jays again will get a chance. Van Akron, Zimmerman. Arms just sends it over. Jays again, Zimmerman goes cross. And the attempted block will cut in. And the Blue Jays have thundered back. A 6-0 run and another timeout for South Dakota. You got to love it. You got to love the fact that the Jays were down 18-14. You're seeing some life from South Dakota. And what a rally. Erica Kostelak coming up at the exactly right moment as far as the serves go. She has done it well and kept South Dakota out of system. Absolutely, that's the name of the game. How long can you stay behind the service line? And Kostlak's doing a good job of keeping South Dakota out of system with her serve, making it easier to defend. So South Dakota will host Creighton on Sunday. It'll be the first visit for Creighton to Vermillion. Again, they will play at the Sanford Coyote, Coyote Sports Center. And that game will come up at 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. It'll be the first road trip for the Jays. And of course, part of that non-conference schedule, which we'll get into a little bit later. We talked about loading that non-conference schedule up because you're never sure what's going to happen with the conference and how good that, how good the Big East will be this year. And this weekend, actually the first weekend of really full Big East play. Marquette played last week, and the Jays played last week. There's that non-conference schedule that we talked about. Nebraska, Omaha, Northern Iowa already out of the way. Wins for the Blue Jays. South Dakota this weekend and next week, and it does say Marquette. And yes, they are in the Big East, but that is a non-conference pair of games for the Jays and the Golden Eagles. They set that up because they wanted to get those quality games on the schedule. Blue Jays, of course, wrap up the season March 20th at Kansas State after that Big East schedule comes at them. Kostelak again serving. She's run off five straight, 18. South Dakota, that score has stayed stagnant while the Jays have burst to the 20-point mark. South Dakota looks a little bit more settled this time. Putting it down, nice job by Nelson. Far side to Zimmerman, and again, that'll be a great hit by Zimmerman. Finds the far corner, nobody there, and it's 21-18 Blue Jays. She's three for her last three, all in different locations. First one, tip over the block. Next one uses the block. This one goes high, deep corner. All yeah. difficult balls. Another great pass from Van Ekren. Kostelek ready to go. Weideman. Julie Davis keeps the Jays alive. Kostelak will run up and bump it over. A little bit long. Was it touched? No, another point for the Blue Jays. 22-18. And it has been Creighton running off eight in a row. That was a tough ball for Harms to try to get at. The ball was set behind her, so she couldn't even see where the court was, and that's a tough ball to attack. Amy Adams stepping in. For South Dakota, here's Kostelek again. She'll go to the far side of the court. Big swing, and that one will finally find pay dirt for South Dakota as Junkie comes through with a point that they desperately needed, and now she'll step back to serve. Again, especially in desperate situations, look to them to go to her every time. They're going to pump that ball to her no matter what. Twenty-two, nineteen, the three-point edge. Zimmerman. And here comes the back row from Healy Davis, and that ball hit back over the net, but out of bounds. Another point for the Jays. It's twenty-three, nineteen. Again, she's got such a heavy arm, no matter if she's in the front row or the back row. She's taking a full swing. Just a tough ball to defend. I feel like that was the replay that we needed earlier. Yeah. And the ball went out on the hit. Zimmerman comes up shy, and it will give a point to the Coyotes, cutting that deficit back to three. Below Weideman. As the Jays setting up. Ellie Bolton in the back middle. Ball to her. Nice dig. Kept in the air by Reinhold. And the Coyotes have a chance. They find it. 23-21. Sammy Slaughter again. Pulling up big for her team. And that'll be a timeout for Coach Booth. 
and the Blue Jays. Well, momentum swinging pretty hard. The Blue Jays, you're down 18-14. Uh, South Dakota burns both of their timeouts in that span where they built that lead, and now it's South Dakota with a little bit of momentum despite being down by two points. That's something that you don't want to lose, like as the Jays. You just made a big run. You have all the momentum on your side, giving them a run and then having to take a timeout. I mean, you would have rather just finish that game. Team comparison right now, the Jays hitting 306 while the Coyotes just 188. The service errors, that's big exactly. right now. Exactly. Five two in favor of the Coyotes. They've they've only committed two while the Jays have, well, they have uh, they have been their own worst enemy. It would be a different ball game right now if they had can, they could avoid those. And again, it's still early in the season. That's why you're playing these tough opponents to try to get better at those individual aspects. And you know, you, you talk about playing a, a sport that you usually play in the fall and having to wait another six months to get going. It's just such an odd time. And, and for these young women, you got to, and, and for everybody really, you got to get in that mental state of, hey, this this is normal now, and, and we've got to be ready to play. For sure. I spoke about it last time. you got to give so much credit to each and every one of these student athletes. I mean, right now we're playing in a 10% capacity gym. They all have masks on. We have an electronic whistle. It's just so much adversity that they're trying to overcome this year. Davis with the sink. South Dakota trying to counter. Zimmerman, somebody needs to put it across. It's Bolton that sends it high over. Weideman is there. Setting on the far side, and it's long. It'll be a point for the Blue Jays. And here we go, set point for great. Hickman will come back in on the front ends, along with Van Eckert and Davis. And now it'll be Kiara Reinhardt that will check out. And they will send in Emily Bressman, sophomore out of Omaha Marion High School, for Kane's old stomping grounds. That place sounds familiar. Sends it wide, and man, oh man, what a serve for Bressman. South Dakota kept it alive, but it's an ace. And the Jays take set number one, 25-21. They call in the lefty, and Bressman delivers a set one winner as the Blue Jays lead it 1-0 tonight at DJ Sokol Arena. South Dakota fought hard. They're going to have to fight even harder as we head to set two coming up next on Jays Video. Set number one in the books. The Jays take it 25-21. They rally just like they did in last Friday's match against Nebraska Omaha, just taking control late. And that's certainly what the Blue Jays did. Here are your preseason All-Big East players. 
Keely Davis, of course, leading the trio of Jays players. Erica Kostelak, who we saw serve the Jays out of that hole in set number one. And finally, it is Jayla Zimmerman coming for you with the with the double points. With the double points. She looks like she works at Disneyland. That's You know you have to point with two fingers at Disneyland. <laughs> Everywhere. What stands out to me right now uh, is actually the blocking. Over the past two matches, Jays have actually had 10 blocks per match. Big number. Both teams are only at one right now. I would assume that their front rows are going to get going here sometime soon, and we'll be able to see a, a few more roofs in this game. Another stat, um, Jayla Zimmerman is, is hitting a .44, five kills on nine attempts and only one error. I mean, hitting that, she's going to be, she's hard to stop right now. You keep bringing that thunder from that far side, and you throw in the way Keely Davis is hitting it as well, only 250 in that first in the first set. But she, I mean, from that back row, look out because that is, a, as you said, a heavy arm. Absolutely, and I, I should say, I mean, I should say all of our hitters right now are hitting well. Anything over a 200, especially by an outside who gets kind of the slums of the sets every once in a while. I mean, we're hitting at a .297, which is not too shabby. Davis set to serve to start set number two. Allie Van Eckren and Grace Nelson. Van Eckren's first start of her career tonight as the ace to start set number two for Keely Davis. And one and start one. Yeah, well, you, you know what? It's a lot easier if you just get it in the hole the first hit. <laughs> yes, exactly. Davis set again. There you see the Jays setting up on the defense. Cross and it's Junkie. They will set into the arms of Madison Harms. She has it blocked. South Dakota again puts it across. Van Eckert, far side, Kostelak dumps it in. Swing and a put over by Jurgens. There's another swing for Zimmerman, and this time from the right wing, she blasts it home, and it's 2-0 great here in set number two. You also notice how all of our outside hitters also swing on the right side, being able to hit from both sides the feet in itself so having all three of our outside hitters be able to be productive on the right side as well just being able to adjust to those different angles such a talent there it is across again jays keep it alive hickman kostelak puts it over and now the set to junkie and she goes long give credit to hickman on that point coming off of a joust and losing the joust and actually being able to pop that ball up is very, very good skin. Heads up play. Literally. <laughs> exactly. Hickman and Kostelak discussing as Davis comes across again. 3-0, Jays set number two. High set for Junkie, blocked by the Jays, and it's back home for another point for Creighton. Jays showing up big for defense on their side of the net right now. Exactly something that I said I wanted to see at the break. A timeout called for down four nothing here in set number two. Here's that block again. You see it's Hickman with Zimmerman right next to her. Four zero South Dakota with the timeout. Set number two action continues next from DJ Sokol Arena. This is Jay's video. Cola together tastes better. Creighton volleyball continues. It was Emily Bressman who ended set number one with an ace, and the Jays have started off just as hot as Keely Davis has come to play from the serving position. Unfortunately, Allie Van Eckert couldn't handle the 
a smart Chill. play by Elizabeth Junkie, knowing that she just got roofed on the last play, taking a little bit off. She just got roofed? Roofed. Does that mean it went long? No, she got it blocked okay, hard. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I, I got to follow these turns. Yeah. Wideman trying for it, and it's another point for the Jays. It needs to be like a, a urban dictionary for volleyball games. <laughs> exactly. I like, I like that, yeah. roofed. Here comes Grace Nelson. Of course, initially started out at Ball State. Transferred to the Jays. Student teaching this year. You know, she said that she was extra busy this semester. There's another one from Junkie. And it is too low for Nelson to get to. Tried to pop it up, but just a little bit late. I didn't think that they were going to call that. Although they do say if the majority of the ball is on the ground, even if you popped it up, it's down. Here's Junkie to serve. Freshman of the year in the Summit League. Big hit for a freshman for the Jays, Reinhardt. Back row, Davis, Van Ekren, Zimmerman. Good combination last set. Almost worked again. Junkie. Van Ekren is there. And here you go, Zimmerman again. Big swing, finds the spot. Six to two. Here's that replay for you, Kate. The ball that we thought might have gotten popped up by Nelson. Big swing. I thought she met it early. That looks like yeah. she got under it. We need the, we need the uh, floorboard cam right there. It's really low. Call the point for South Dakota. It's okay. Jays still lead by four out of bounds on the big swing for South Dakota. And another point for the Jays. Kostelek, if you missed set one, came in to serve after the Jays sided out down 18-15 and ran off seven straight. Weideman into the middle. Cross somewhat weakly by South Dakota. Jays sent it back the other way, the same way. Big swing by Harms. Jays will keep it alive. Zimmerman. Weideman. Again, it's Harms, and they're going to call what? A double contact. So the ball doesn't come out smooth. That means that it's coming out at different rates on your hands. So they see that rotation of that ball, and they'll call it. Kostelak again, 8-2 Jays, leaves it short, and it's 8-3. How many service aces did they end up with in the first set? It was at five three. at one point. Uh, service errors. errors, excuse me, not aces. Three, three aces, five errors, and there's the first. Double contact. That double contact. You can just see her hands. Yep, just comes just a, out a little bit. A little uneven. Mm -hmm. Zimmerman. Poked over, kept alive by Bolton. Jayla, big swing from the back row, Junkie. Now you can hear the thunder starting here at Sokol Arena. Great dig up front, but too shy to give a teammate the chance to put it across. Thought Lolo Weidemann was going to keep it alive, but and she did. Just sometimes it's just too late. Everybody's out of position by that time. And yeah, looked like she didn't realize her setter was the one that dug that. Big swing kept alive. That was Sammy Slaughter again. Davis trying to come near side from the far wing. Bolton keeps it alive. Nelson cannot keep it alive. Just a little bit too far out of the reach, and she ends up outside of the court on the carpet. Take another look at that double contact. Yeah, so right there, you can see the her hands are uneven. That ball is uneven right now. It's going to come out of her right hand before it comes out of her left hand. And then you can see her left hand just kind of flicks it. Obviously, two separate contacts. So there's that spin that. that you were talking about as well. Makes it kind of obvious, doesn't it? As the serve into the net. So a point to the Jays. They hit the 10-point mark, 10-4. So, Kate, is it possible, and, and you would know, is it possible to have spin on the ball if you hit it cleanly? Absolutely. I mean, I 
have the smallest hands in the world. I was never allowed to set the ball. So, <laughs> but absolutely, there are plenty of balls that you can see that come out of the center's hands that have a little bit of spin on it. But if you have a lot of rotation on that ball, you can clearly tell that it's not coming out correctly. Out of bounds. Although it's touched by the Blue Jays, 10-5. I'm not sure that they thought they touched it. Nelson will come back in for Reinhardt. Bolton and Zimmerman as well. Up front, it's Hicks, Davis, and Van Akron. Brooklyn Ballweg, the sophomore set for the Coyotes. Nice and low over the net. Jays reacts well. Zimmerman to Davis, back to Zimmerman, and now the attack up front by Weidenfeld. Oh, man. Big swing, just a little bit too big for Keeley Davis. Jays are doing a really good job of second chance contacts. They're doing a good job of, even on broken plays, being able to try and get a good swing out of it. Ball leg 5-4 out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Again, nice angle on the serve, brings it over. Jay's able to handle it. Back the other way, and just shy is Amy Adams. 11-6, Blue Jays. Jay's left out of that one. Ball leg has a great serve, and the Jays were having a little bit of trouble with it. Hina Puaha back in for the Blue Jays. over, Hickman pops it up. Davis is there. Nice job by Weideman. Back the other way, Junkie. Big swing. Kostelek, initial contact, just a little bit too much for Grace Nelson to get there. Looked like Grace thought she was going to be digging that ball, so she was already headed to the floor by the time Kostelek touched it. She couldn't get back up. You see the conversation there between teammates. Always good to see. For next time. Next time I got that one. Nelson to Pua, ah. Costa left, hammers it across. Junkie again, blocked by the Jays. South Dakota keeps it alive, across is Adams. Pua ah again, and again it's Costa left. this time just right. One thing I really like about Kostelak is that when she's in system and has a great ball, she's going to rip it. She's going to swing hard. When it's not a good ball, when she's out of system, she's smart. She's putting it in places that she knows the defense is not. Is one more time on the replay. And we'll see it again perhaps later. Junkie tries to go shy with it. And a little bit too shy. 13-7 Blue Jays. You can tell she's noticing that that left side of the court, that cut shot, is open. She's been successful on it a few times. You can definitely tell that's exactly what she was trying to do on that attack. Davis to serve for the Blue Jays. Another big swing, and again, shy. Another point for Creighton, 14-7. Junkie's struggling a little bit. Again, when you know, you're not getting a good pass and you're out of system, it's hard to get your hitters in good situations. See South Dakota trying to figure this out in process. We've got a timeout coming up on the next point for the Blue Jays, should we get there? We've got a chance, and perhaps that's why Coach Williamson is not called one yet. High in the air for Nelson. Kostelek again, smart play as you said, Kate. Not the ball she wanted to hit. And again, here we go. Big swing off the hands. Weideman, nice dig to the net. Junkie blocked again by Creighton. South Dakota doing an excellent job. Junkie finally getting it off of a Blue Jay on the big swing. And they end the rally. It's 14 to 8, South Dakota. Give credit to Junkie. You can tell that her team rides her, and they put a lot of pressure on her to get them, you know, points. And so she failed one time, and the next ball she takes their hands and says, "Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna block me again, I'll try to swing it off your left hand." 14 to eight. South Dakota trying to rally, and that is not going to help as Jurgens sends it in to the net, and we will not have our timeout that was taken a timeout earlier by South Dakota 
so that negates this immediate timeout of the 15. That's fine with us, as we'll play on. Naomi Hickman, you saw her in those highlights from the 2018 NCAA matchup with the Coyotes. Sends it to the back row. A dig by Davis. Pua'a getting low. Kostelek against South Dakota. Junky, nice job for Junkie to send it across. The Blue Jays put it right back. Junkie, big swing. Weideman keeps it alive. Again, Junkie. Davis keeps it up. Kostelek, and that's too much. The Jays finally got the hit they needed, and it's Erica Kostelek that brings the hammer. Wow. That's all I'm speechless at that point. Keely Davis gets it with one hand and actually gives a perfect set out to Kostelik out there. And there's the challenge by Leanne Williamson, seventh year as the head coach. And are they looking, they must be looking at whether it was in or out. Nothing else to challenge on that play, Kate, that you saw. Yeah, uh, to me it looked clearly in, but well, we're I can't. right in, we're right in front of where it was landed at. To me, no contest, but oh, see right there. Here it is again, the slow motion on the rewinds. I mean, you just missed it on the video. Yeah. Another angle. Shielded out. All right there. Got a to put in. Yep. Oh, maybe it hadn't landed yet. That's why it's levitating currently. Yeah. No. Pole's in the way. By that trajectory, that might be out. Well, and here's the here's what you need to stay is that in the first game, the same question came up. It was already ruled a point for South Dakota. This has already been ruled a point for Creighton. And there's not definitive evidence that we've seen, but perhaps the official will determine. That it is. Yeah. There's our net cam. Either way, that was a great play by the Jays. All right, here's the ruling from our official tonight. And it is going to stay with the Jays. 258 CU hitting on the night. Four aces, including one to cap game number one, Emily Bressman's second career ace. Finished off set number 125-21 for the Blue Jays. And Hickman a little bit long. That one a little bit easier to see. Grace Nelson, 12 digs so far in tonight's match. That is her eighth career match with 10 or more digs, and that, of course, matches her CU career high. Junkie. Pua'a -a leaves it for Reinhardt, blocked at the net by a pair of Coyotes. Adams and Slaughter got there. Going back to defense and Grace Nelson and Lola Weidman, I think they're doing a, both a fantastic job of directing both their team's defense and the defensive efforts for both teams are very impressive for tonight. Keely Davis off the Pua'a pass. Reinhardt, Zimmerman, big hammer from Zimmerman. Over the net for Slaughter. Pua'a again, Reinhardt. Ball skipping toward the end, and they're going to say point Blue Jays. Too many, and it's 17-10. Looks like uh, one of the Coyotes is in the net. Got a little piece of it. Kostelek. As the official confers with the coaches. And they get a towel to wipe some sweat off the floor. Kostelek with those knee braces on both legs. She looks like she's ready for battle. <laughs> I bet she's honestly, because I'm pretty sure she had surgery last year. Yep. And so I bet she's you know, thankful that she got a few extra months of rehab sure. and, and comfortability playing after surgery. Here she comes, good serve again. Junkie off the floor. And a big hammer from Slaughter from the near side. Healy Davis has to think twice as that 
line escaped her. Reinhardt off the handle of Lolo Weidman, and it's a point for the Blue Jays. You can see Keely Davis on that back row attack. It was just set way too short for her, and so since she's in the back row, her hand cannot make contact with the ball at the top of the net unless she's behind the 10-foot line. And she managed to adjust. Official saw it, and an ace for Kostelek. 19-10 Blue Jays. Erica on the night has picked up a pair of aces. That one will force a timeout for South Dakota. 19-10, the Blue Jays have built a big lead here in set number two, leading the match one set to none. More Jays volleyball on Jays video coming up. Omaha, Nebraska, nighttime on a Friday night. Cheers to the weekend as the Jays are opening it up with this home match against the Coyotes of South Dakota, looking to make themselves 3-0 on the season. And they've got a ways to go, although they've got a good handle on set number two, leading already 1-0. This one at 19-10. And you look at what's coming up on Sunday is another, another matchup with South Dakota. And we talked with Coach Booth about being playing so many like opponents back to back to back and obviously she made the joke well it makes scouting less and um, she said it's it's almost a disadvantage to win night number one and as many people have said we'll we'll take that chance absolutely you know you always want to get the win but as being those coaches yes it may be different scouting but she also wants to try to decide you know what South Dakota's coach is going to try to change on her offense and try to defend that so sure it's always a questionable. So we'll have to figure out how to defend it. Kostelek serves her third ace of the night. Toward the back row, Weideman again. Dug and sent high. And Slaughter will send it over the net. And Ekren, little tip over for Zimmerman. Weideman again. Here comes the swing from Slaughter. Davis keeps it alive. Grace Nelson all the way back. And Davis will send it over again. Far side slaughter off the hands of Nelson, and it's a point for the Coyotes. 20 to 11. Grace sticking her arms out, thinking that ball was in, and I agree, I think it was in. I just don't think she got enough of her body behind that ball to bring it back into the court. Emily Bressman will check in for the Jays as Lolo Weideman, Coyotes libero serving. Van Eckerd keeps it alive, slides out of the way for Zimmerman. Now she'll race back in, Will Van Eckerd. Here come the Coyotes on the attack, and a big hole, and they found it. 20 to 12. Here it is again. You can see Grace Nelson in a good spot. Yep. Just, just outside of her reach, not getting her entire body behind that ball. Weideman, Bressman sends it up. Van Eckerd across court. To Jayla Zimmerman, blocked at the net again, this time by the Jays' Annika Welty. Welty again with a big swing and a block for Slaughter. And a little bit of a coyote run now for South Dakota. 20 to 13, the lead has shrunk. Slaughter's doing a great job for the coyotes, both hitting-wise and blocking-wise. She's having a great setup, making it hard for those backside hitters to get through her. Item and again, nice dig by Bressman. And Eckert, Zimmerman, and it is off the antenna on the wrong side. Or was she in the net? Nope, off the antenna. And a timeout for the Blue Jays, 20 to 14. So a good run for South Dakota. Good to see them not going anywhere. They had some bad luck last weekend. They went to extras in set number three against Wichita. Still got swept in that one. 
And then against Missouri State, they lost the first set, rallied back in two and three. And then set four, they had a late lead. Missouri State at the Hammond Center, that's their home gym. Uh, they were able to come back and force that fifth and deciding set. And of course, another late lead erased for South Dakota in that match. So they are 0-2, but it's it's a competitive 0-2. And I know nobody likes to lose, but if you're going to do it, at least at least do it with some backbone. And South Dakota did last week, showing it right here as well. Something always good you want to see from your team, that fight and everything. Again, they're only two games into the season. The season is still young. And it's great to see that they can be in those big matches and still fight in those matches. So I'd say let them settle down here after a few matches and, and they'll be good to go for some at least. Lola Weideman has done a nice job rallying South Dakota back, called the force the timeout for Coach Berthal Booth. A couple of notes. 15 digs tonight for Grace Nelson. That surpasses her career high that she set at Ball State. And she's got that new mark. Also, Erica Kostelak with four aces. That, of course, is also a career high. Van Ekren to Zimmerman. Dumps it across. Perfect spot. And the Jays end the South Dakota rally. Go up by seven. That right front tip spot has proven to be troublesome for the Coyote defense. I like that, troublesome. Troublesome. Here's Jayla Zimmerman. One of three Blue Jay preseason all Big East team members. Bressman keeps it alive. Van Eckert, high pass to Davis, and she sends it into the net. That's one thing I like both teams to incorporate more in this game is getting their middles involved. I don't think either team, either team's middle hitters have very many attacks. Freshman out of Potter, Nebraska. Here's Maddie Johnson. Again, about a two-hour drive between here and Vermillion, South Dakota, where the Coyotes call home. And Ekron, tough play, but she manages to keep it on the Coyotes' side. Nelson, Van Ekron, Davis. And here come the Coyotes again. Junkie rising up. She'll put it across. Van Ekron, there it's Welty. And just a bit outside for Annika Welty. 21-16, Jay's lead is shrunk to five. I do like that play. I do like her coming on that slide on the back. Um, she's been very, very effective at it. Just a little wide this time. Nice serve again. Zimmerman sends it back. Blocked at the net for South Dakota. Nice job. Jays will try it again. Van Eckert trying to dump it across on the surprise play, and it's backfires into the net. So now a four-point lead for the Blue Jays. Yeah. You love them when they work, that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Jays having some trouble right now. Serve receiving. Again, the backbone of any team's offense is your serve receive. So struggling in that, it's going to be hard to get out of a rut. Something that they need to do right now. Ellie Bolton checks in for Bressman. Here comes Another serve long, yes, out of bounds, and the Jays take again a five-point lead. That's sent for McKenna Krause off the bench. Bolton and Zimmerman in the back row, Davis. Hickman and Van Eckren up front, and that ball is an ace. Great call again for Coach Booth. She called in Emily Bressman to serve an ace to end set number one. Now it is McKenna Krause who comes in and immediately serves an ace. 23-17 Jays. Krause again, just short of clearing that net. I thought she was going to get a little bit of luck and go off the top of it, but. Well, she might have gotten the roll there. So Krause out. Monica Welty in for her, and then of course the libero, Grace Nelson will replace her. Lynn Ballweg serving for South Dakota. They rallied back, trail only by five, but the Jays inching closer to that 25 point mark. Nice job by Zimmerman, Van Ekren, Keeley. It's good as the block from South Dakota lands out of bounds, and it is again set point 
Jays were hitting above 300 for much of this second set, and it has dipped below 200 on that South Dakota run. It has, and I attribute that to South Dakota's serving. They kept the Jays out of system, which made it hard to have any good attack, really. Pua -a coming in, sends it to the back row. Block at the net, Hickman overpowered by the Coyotes, Madison Jurgens. And the Coyotes will stay alive. Jurgens named a Summit League player to watch this year. Does a really, really good job of running her team's offense. Comes Evelyn Diedrich for the second time in the match. Jays clapping on set point, and they'll get it. A service error to end set number two. Blue Jays go up 2-0. Set number one, 25-21. Set number two, 25-19. 2-0. As we take a break here from DJ Sokol Arena, Blue Jays and the Coyotes from DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha. More after this with Jays video.
Creighton Volleyball brought to you by Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, together, tastes better. DJ Sokol Arena, the Jays leading 2-0 over visiting South Dakota. Here are the highlights from those first two sets. You see the, well, the thunder has been brought early and often in the blocks. We, we talked about how there hasn't been that many, but you see us start this highlight package off with a couple and then look at him again at the net, just creating problems. As I think, again, both teams are doing tremendous jobs keeping the ball off the floor. Both defensive efforts on both sides making it extremely hard for either side to get points on attacks, which again means that our blockers need to get back into the game, make it easier on our defense. Jays with seven aces already, and you look at what the Jays have done as, as far as spreading the attacks around. Davis, Zimmerman, Kostlak bearing the brunt of them, 61 combined, but it's it's been on the other side, all Elizabeth Junkie, 39 total attempts. And, and I tell you what, you got to take the load off somewhere. Absolutely. I think this is when that slaughter needs to step up. I think that's a perfect, I mean, they're opposites as well. So when Junkies in the back row slaughters up there, and I think she needs to take some of that load off. Adam Slaughter and Weidenfeld all with double digit attacks, but just barely over that 10 mark. Well, Junkie nearly 40 already. We'll try Slaughter out to start set number three, and she's got it. one nothing South Dakota. 0-8 is USD as far as set wins on the year. Jays on the other side of the spectrum at 8-0. Set number three, one nothing South Dakota. Both these teams again on Sunday in Vermillion. And another service error for South Dakota. That is their seventh of the night. You walk the thin line of high risk, high reward when it comes to serving versus aces. But right now, South Dakota's at seven, serve, seven service errors versus one ace. And the Jays do have one more service error, but they've got seven aces on the night. High risk, high reward. Well, T, bring it this time, and another nice kill for South Dakota. That's something that they need to keep going. They need to get Harms and Weidenfeld into their offense more often. Again, that starts with the pass, the serve and pass. I mean, if you're not going to pass, well, you can't get your middles in. So look for them to be trying to go to their middles more often. Here comes Ballweg. She has done a nice job on the night serving the put, serving the ball. And now across it comes Van Ekren. Big swing, and it's blocked perfectly by South Dakota. Nice job on the far side of the net. And you see the smiling face under that mask of Madison Harms. Arms Adams up front. Bullwig again with the serve. Big hit for Reinhardt. And the ball off the hands of South Dakota off the scorer's table on the far side. That was a great swing by Reinhardt, especially on those slide approaches. They have so much momentum going into that hit. Those balls were just pretty hard to defend. Zimmerman set, and we're off. Lola Weideman gets it set up. Another big hit for South Dakota up front. Junkie getting some assistance this game. So again, that's what you get when you're going to pass the ball well. You can get your offense really going and making it hard for those blockers to decide who's getting the ball. Weideman set. She'll serve to the left of Ballweg, who waits in that middle position, a nice hit across Davis. As much as she can bring the absolute radar gun type speed, she really backed off, placed it perfectly on that swing. And at that point, Jason was looking for a side out. They need the next ball, and that place on the Coyotes side is just a sore thumb. Reinhardt ready, she's got two ser service errors on the night. Let's see if she can keep it clean this time around. She'll get one attempt to s against South Dakota. They're doing a good job, Katie wouldn't, you, Katie, wouldn't you say, of staying in system. That They've really set this up nicely. Big swing again, and they find the open spot. Absolutely. Uh, again, that stems back to passing. If you're going to pass the ball well, your setter has free range to be able to. When she's deceptive, the blockers don't know where to go, and sometimes you can catch a blocker leaning, and that's what just happened to Hickman right there. And had a huge hole 
that junk can just power through. Davis, nice job by Weideman keeping it alive. Far side, Junkie. Again kept alive by Zimmerman. Van Ekren over to Davis, still alive. South Dakota plays it back. Van Ekren dumps it across, and nice placement as it's to the far side, and that was the open area. Good, smart play for Kara Reinhardt. That's one of the main reasons why they're running this 5-2 um, offense is because they get that chance to have that center attack, to have Van Ekren be a threat. Mahina Pua'a back in for the Jays. Nicely done by Adams to put it across. Keeping the attack alive. Ball away. Again across. Davis off the hand of a coyote. And it's a point for the Jays. It's a really smart play by Davis. Knowing that that ball's right on top of the net. Nobody in the back row is calling for an attack, anything like that. Takes it over on two. Jays have tied it up at five. Hua ah, far side, nice serve again. Getting some different placement looks. Hua ah, back set as Welty sends it across, blocked out of bounds. And the Jays take a 6 5 lead. Nearly got the ace, and they send it long. 7-5, Blue Jays have taken the lead. It's a little bit out of sync there. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, nice drop, dropping it in between. And that's exactly what South Dakota does. Off the block, it falls in between the front and back row. South Dakota slices the deficit with Elizabeth Junkie back. South Dakota doing a really good job keeping their middles in their offense. They're, uh, they're being a problem for the Jays. Well, off far past the Davis brings it down. Weideman is there. And now they'll set up Slaughter. She leaves it short. And another point for the Jays. Smart play. I just think she was a little too far off the net to make that actually work. Keely Davis is back. And Davis across. Wideman again. This middle attack that time from Junkie. Off of the set from Jurgens. Far side. Keeping it alive is Weidenfeld. And now Zimmerman. Lola Weideman keeps it alive. Now it's Grace Nelson. Pua ah. Back row for Davis and just. Was that pass low? Was it too low to be able to handle for Keely Davis? Yep. So again, you want to keep those back row attacks low. You don't want to chuck them up to the ceiling. But I mean, that one barely cleared the net. Tough for Davis to get a good swing on it. And that, of course, is the question this season for the Jays. Will they be able to play that two-setter attack with Pua ah and Van Ekren? They're very drastically different as far as how they hit the ball and how they pass the ball. An ace for South Dakota ties it at eight. I think they both have different setting styles and different ways they like to run their offense. Um, and so if, it'll be interesting. As a team, if you can get used to both of them, that how much of an advantage is that being able to play with two very different types of attacks? Oh, absolutely. A huge advantage. If you have all of your hitters okay hitting from Pua ah and hitting from Van Ekren, that's a monumental just because it doesn't matter then who's setting the ball. They the, have good connection. The point for South Dakota puts them ahead as Weidenfeld, the junior out of Omaha, will continue to serve. Nelson, Pua ah, nicely placed. Zimmerman brings it down. Trying to keep it alive was Jurgens, but it's a point for the Jays to tie it at nine. It's a big swing down the line. I don't think we, we've seen Zimmerman or Davis or Kostelak, for that matter, hit down the line yet today. That's a great swing. 
They've been coming across the court on it quite a few of them, haven't they? Sometimes that the decides shot, on, as you call it. Absolutely. Where the, where the block sets up, sometimes they're absolutely taking that line away. So it just kind of depends on where your block's setting up. And we do have a libero switch this game. Ellie Bolton, who did come in in the opening weekend as the libero, has put on the blue jersey. So it is no longer Grace Nelson. And a point to the Jays. Two hits. Double contact, yep. Same concept as when we were talking about it before with a setter. It's just he tried to punch it over, hit it two different times before it went over the net. And Bolton will serve. Coach Burns, as she hits it into the net, talks about how she's composed. You can never tell when she's rattled, which is a very important, she thinks. Uh, she thought Brittany Witt was a lot like that when she really played it for the Jays the last four years. You can never tell when you were getting to her when she, when she may have been frazzled a bit. Absolutely, and that's the, that's the most important thing as a libero. A, on service team, you don't want to show that you're frustrated or weak because you're the only one that they're going to be going to. Pua ah was trying to set up, and Adams just dumped it right in front of her. 11-10, South Dakota with the lead. Here it is again as Mahina was trying to anticipate where she was going to hit it, and Adams just snuck one in on her. Back set to Welty off the hands of Lolo Weideman, and it is tied again, this time at 11. It's a great swing by Welty. Had a great approach to it. One thing I think is a great thing, an important thing for a volleyball player in general, nonetheless a libero, a quick memory. Kostelek set to serve, and she has done a nice job tonight, setting a career high in aces. On the way, tight to the net. Big swing again for Adams. Blocked, and nice job by Van Ekren. Got up in the net, pushed it back across. Here's a couple of Erica's aces tonight. She has done a great job, in fact, rallying the Blue Jays from a four-point deficit in set number one. There's another one that she is set again to serve. Weidman picks it up, thundered across, and Kostelek can't keep it alive in the right direction. Nice effort for Bolton, but it's a point to South Dakota. One thing about Kostelek's serve is, yes, she is getting aces, but she's also putting South Dakota out of system. So, yes, you want the ace, but as many times as they're out of system and not being able to pass her serve, it's just as good as an ace. Just doesn't reflect that way on the stats, does it? <laughs> exactly. We've got a... It's like a broken mask. We've got a mask exchange. Something I never thought I would be commenting on. You know, I, I, there's a, the last year things have come into fashion that you never thought would be in fashion. That one is going to be deep for Bullweg. Tried to find that back corner and just left it long. That's, it's very interesting. You know, now that you, you have to leave the house and you got a wallet, keys, Mask. phone, right? You never thought you'd need your phone if you're a certain age. Uh, you got to have a fake whistle now, so. <laughs> All we need is those sidelines that light up when the ball's in. <laughs> There's an ace for the Jays, 14 to 12. So mark it down. I, I know you don't have a trademark on it or a patent, but the uh, the lit up lit up sidelines. Kate Elman wants that to happen. I'm working on. Anytime it. it hits, it glows neon. What kind of neon are you looking for? Like red? Yeah, I want it to blink red. You know, like the shot clock on a basketball right behind yeah. there. That's what you know it needs to be lit up. Bolton, nice job as the Jays send across in the arm of Jayla Zimmerman. Junkie, Bolton's there again. Van Ekren, and just shy. I don't think it was going over the net anyway, but a block for South Dakota off of the arm of Keeley Davis, and it's 14-13. It's a great defensive effort by Ellie Bolton. Junkie just hit two hammers towards her, and she took care of both of them like they were free balls. A low wide up and another serve. Again, it sends a J to the ground. And nice work, but no, it's out. Big arm, but it just does go on the outside of that touch line. And we're tied again at 14. Another tie here in set number three. Blue Jays lead it 2-0. Getting low, and here's Davis in the air. Saved by South Dakota. Put across by Adams. 
Van Ekren, back set. Reinhardt put up in the air on the back row by Grace Nelson. Big swing again, and it's a point for South Dakota as that ball goes all the way into the concourse area. And that will bring us to our timeout at the 15-point mark. It is South Dakota that has it this time around. A trail 2-0, but are trying to rally here in this match tonight from DJ Sokol Arena. Blue Jay Volleyball coming to you on Jay's video. She's keeping the ball in play, which is really, really great to see from an outside hitter. 6-2 junior out of Lincoln, Nebraska. It is 15-14 South Dakota in front. That sent us to the timeout, and it will be the Coyotes serving as we get things resituated on the court here. Lolo Weideman, libero for South Dakota, has done a nice job of giving the Coyotes a little push out of bounds on the big arm of Keeley Davis, and it's 16-14. We saw this in set number one where South Dakota took an 18-14 lead before the Jays rallied back to win it 25-21. That point, I think it was the Jays passing, and right now it's just they're hitting. They're making a lot of unforced errors. And Ekron, Reinhardt, too long. And another point for the Coyotes. Three-point lead now. With that three-point lead being our last three points, they're on attack errors. Right now, the Jays just need to have a good setup Good attack of the ball. Zimmerman again. Zimmerman, Van Ekren, far side to Davis. South Dakota responds with the dig. Junkie. Nelson gets low. Back is Zimmerman, and a great hit for Jayla Zimmerman. Right down Broadway, but finds the opening. That was a big swing, and she came in hot. I mean, there is back row for USD. Didn't really have a shot at that ball. And she puts it right in between those defenders. If you see that, she's not aiming at, you know, the right back defender. She's aiming at that space right in between those. So either A, communication error, or B, hard ball to dig. Reinhardt rips it. At the net, it is Weidenfeld that couldn't get the full brunt of her power behind it. And the Jays find an easy block for the point. It's also tough as a middle blocker when your setter is setting you into four monster hands right in front of you. Hard to do something with that. Right, hard again. Heidemann on the back row. Junkie, big rip. Nelson's there. Van Ekren, far side. And Davis pokes it in. Heidemann again. Adams blocked at the net. And it's a point for the Jays. Both Grace Nelson and Ellie are doing fantastic jobs taking away that hard cross-court shot by Junkie. I mean, that's an outside hitter's bread and butter. So they are forcing her, hey, if you're going to get a kill, you're going to have to make me move extremely far for it. Reinhardt has ripped off a couple of points in a row after the Jays cut it to 17-15 on a side out. So again, the towel used to wipe the floor this year. Normally, you'd have somebody come out with a mop, but they're trying to keep people separated. So it, even things like that you don't think about. Sanitizing the volleyballs. Jay's got a piece of it at the net. Van Ekren, far side. Davis, high in the air. It's Jurgens to the far side. Adams swings. Nelson, Zimmerman, Davis. 
And it's blocked at the net for South Dakota. They take the lead. South Dakota doing a great job on that right side, setting up a good block and getting four hands in front of all of the Jays outside hitters. Eighteen seventeen, South Dakota. And it's the freshman coming across, Maddie Johnson. Jays trying to end her opportunities and look at Maddie Jurgens. That's the center attack that we're looking for, especially from an Ali Van Akron. When you know, growing as a setter, that's the type of setter attack. You don't want that to be any shot that anybody can pick that up. Look at that. She just throws it right down. Nobody there. Picked up by Zimmerman. Van Ekren again to Davis. She'll dump it in, and it's too low and too late. Jay's cut it to one, 19 to 18. Without fail, that tip right over the block. We've seen Keely Davis do that a few times. And I, I mean, she's got a high percentage on that falling at this point. Here comes Hina Pua'a. Jay's down one. Sends it far side. Weidman is there. Big swing for Weidenfeld. Blocked by the Jays. Out of bounds. Zimmerman wanted to make it clear that she did not get a piece of that. You can see Coach Booth asking both of her players, hey, did you touch that? And are they going to challenge it? Here's the question. I thought Zimmerman might have gotten out of the way, and here is a challenge. And that's exactly what they will say. 20 to 18, South Dakota as it stands. I always like how Kirsten asks her players, hey, what did you think about that shot before she rips the challenge card? Well, I, obviously, they're the ones with a piece of it. Did that change direction on a finger at the net? I don't know. You need to see it from behind our blockers to see if it got any part. I don't think it got him. Here's another look from up top. I don't think Zimmerman hit it. The question has to be at the net, does it not? Question not at the net, that they touched the net. I think no, we're looking I, at, at Hickman. The, did it kid her finger? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what they're looking Coming over at. the net, yeah. I don't think her fingers stayed straight. And that's when you, you that's a tell all. If you see a finger bend or yep. if you see the ball change directions, and it doesn't look definitively like that happened. So, Monica Welty and Naomi Hickman there. And you said it, Coach Booth asked both of them. Here's the ruling from the official on the far side. And this is a big one. Not tied at 19, or South Dakota still up. Oh. oh, he signaled the wrong way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was going to say. So it did not. He initially said, I thought he said it did touch, but he must have been saying, no, it didn't touch. Initially. I'll tell you what, sign language Ooh. is a. Uh, when you're the only one speaking a certain version of it, that's the, the volleyball referee dialect. Pua -a -a, cross. Winding up his junkie. Big swing. And the Jays come through with the dig. Jurgens again junkie. Too long. Did he get a piece of it? Yes. Now it's 20 to 19 South Dakota. Both sides really taking big swings at the ball any chance they can get. Proves for a very, very fun match to watch. Elizabeth Junkie set to serve. Blue Jays stringing it out across the back row. Pua'a -a leaves it for Zimmerman. She comes up softly. And now the big swing by Slaughter. 21-19 South Dakota. Trying to win their first set of the year. They are 0-8 so far. Timeout Blue Jays. A two-point deficit as we get later and later into the set. It's, uh, it's turned out this is what South Dakota needs, something to get that momentum back on their side. And they have played well down early to the Blue Jays. They've rallied back now, leading by two. Kate, and if you're the Blue Jays in this timeout, what, do you, what are you talking about? You've, you've seen what the problem is. How do you take care of it this late in the match? Honestly, right now, I think the problem is 
A passing, B being passive. On that last set, they sent Jayla from the back row and she roll shotted it. If you're gonna roll shot it, it's gotta be an aggressive roll shot. I mean, she roll shotted it right to a defender. So I think in these types of situations, you don't wanna make the errors, but if you're being too passive, you're giving South Dakota the opportunity to come back and jam it down your throat. You, you've gotta be aggressive enough to get to be able to get the point. Exactly. So Jay's talking it over in the timeout. Last weekend it was you and O and you and I going down here at home. Jace trying to start the opening trio of games with the three and zero record. Still leading at 2-0, but South Dakota trying to close that gap. And I'll tell you what, if you are if you're the Coyotes right now, all you need is a little bit of hope. They are a good team, 31 and three last year. You know they they lost one at home, lost one on the road, lost one neutral site. They just they just have not found it yet this year. And I'm pretty sure Wichita State and Missouri State both thankful that they were managed to pull out some wins. Jays get a little out of system, and I'll tell you what, Pua uh, Seth Hickman Hickman thought something different was coming. She gets it across, and the Blue Jays luck out with the point to the far side. Again, tips it right to that right front spot where nobody seems to be able to pick anything up. Big serve for Keeley Davis. Off of Jay, back side, it's Davis that gets a hold of it. And another big hit for South Dakota, 22-20. Slaughter doing a great job putting the ball in play aggressively and then setting up a great block on that right side attack. Eddie Weidenfeld, elementary ed major from Omaha, went to Marion High School. The Jays have seen plenty of those. And she goes long on the serve, and Creighton closes it to one. These are the types of situations where those types of errors do hurt you. So here comes the freshman Ellie Bolton out of Shawnee, Kansas. She's had quite the night. 12 digs all of last week in two matches. She's already piled up 13 tonight. She'll send the serve over. Slaughter finds a spot where there are no Jays, and it's 23-21 South Dakota. It's a great swing. They haven't swing cross court this whole game. That one, she just goes a little bit more thumb down and cuts it on that inside. Jurgens with the serve. Bolton up, Pua'a. -a. Monica Welty sent it in the right spot, but South Dakota, great job of picking it up. Reinhardt has it blocked. Pua'a -a goes across. South Dakota there again as Weideman sets him up. Jayla Zimmerman, big swing. Again, South Dakota responds. Jurgens, Adams across. Now another one. Lolo Weideman is there, too close to the net. Point for the Jays. It's a very fun play to watch. Again, both teams going at it defensively, saying, hey, if you're if you're gonna want this point, you're gonna have to really go at it and prove right there, Zimmerman. Keely Davis has reached her fourth career match with 10 digs or more. She surpassed that mark a few moments ago with 11 in this ball game. Kostelak will be ready to serve after a timeout on the floor. I believe South Dakota is the one they called it, correct? I believe so. So the Coyotes want to discuss taking care of business here in set number three. You see the score, 23-22. Jake Ryan along with Kate Elman, and it has been, we expected it to be a competitive match. The Blue Jays have, have taken care of business in the first two sets, not necessarily easily, but you see those spans of a four-point margin and a six-point margin, and I think they got the right, right of momentum in those sets at, at the exact time they needed them, and that was enough to pull away from South Dakota. And I tell you what, the uh, the Coyotes aren't letting it happen in this one. Absolutely, I think this next point is going to be a big one because that you either reach a tie, 23-23, or you know you're trying to save the game point. Well, think about that reversal earlier that the Jays got. And I thought that might be a momentum swinger. And it turns out that although it went from a 
two point advantage to a tie game on that reversal. South Dakota again continue to keep pushing forward. They've got a lot of good leadership on this team. Especially you start with Sammy Slaughter, the senior. She's the lone senior on this year's team, but Madison Jurgens and a couple of sophomores that had a lot of experience last last season, Elizabeth Junkie and Madison Arms. And then you throw in Weidman and White Fell. And, and those two sophomores, those two juniors, I, I, they've got good experience. And they're not going away anytime soon. They know what it's like to win, so you're, you don't lay down for them. Absolutely. Veteran teams know you got to fight. Here's one of the Jays seniors, Erica Kostelak, has served well tonight. And man, oh man, was that ball put in the wrong spot for South Dakota. Again, Kostelak again with a tough serve. Jayla Zimmerman waiting for it. Look at the power. And right in the spot where South Dakota couldn't respond. Exactly why coaches say keep your hands high. 23-23 deep for Kostelak. A rare error for Erica. Set point for South Dakota. Grace Nelson will return to the Jays lineup. Kostelak will cheer from the sideline. I think they're going to go to Zimmerman right now. She's been big for the Jays. Good timing for South Dakota. They've got Brooklyn Ballweg ready to service. Nice and low. Bolton is there close to the net. Van Ecker keeps it alive, and the Jays keep it alive, and it's out of bounds, and that'll be it. In set number three, South Dakota. They bend but do not break and finally win their first set of this 2021 spring season. They take out Creighton 25-23. Now at 2-1, the Blue Jays have got to find that momentum in set number four. We'll be back for it right after these messages. It's Jays Volleyball on Jays Video. Sokol Arena. Creighton leads this one two to one. As South Dakota comes back to play in set number three. Jays will be set to serve to start set number four tonight. They sustain two teams Sunday afternoon in Vermilion. They'll battle, and of course, there's some there's some Omaha ties up there in South Dakota. Former Nebraska Omaha Athletic Director, of course, Dave Herbster, leads that department. And former Creighton 
marketing guy, Mike West, also the, I believe, deputy athletic director is his title up at South Dakota. So there's some there's some ties either way. Some Marion girls on that team as well. And there's an ace to start set number four by Jayla Zimmerman. One zip great quickly. That's one way to do it. If I was Kirsten, I'd be happy starting off the set with an ace. So the Jays ready. Over the top, here comes Slaughter. We saw her make a difference. 300 coming into this set on the night. Weideman. Nice shot for South Dakota right down the middle. We saw them starting to do that at the beginning of set two as well, getting their middles more involved, or set three, excuse me, getting their middles more involved in the plays, making open selections for their outsides later in the game. Into the net, and the Jays retake the lead. Kara Reinhardt's ready to go. 2-1 Jays. Reinhardt with a, I like that timing stare that she does before she releases. I saw that the last game too, and I thought, you know, everybody has their own routine, <laughs> and she just likes to look away for hers. Hickman, intimidating at the net. Got a piece of that one, I believe, and South Dakota unable to handle it. Watch it again. She just glances over that right shoulder. I thought somebody was yelling at her the first time she did it. She could be looking at her elbow, maybe. That's maybe. a big thing in serving. There's another tip at the net. Van Eckren and Hickman. And Van Eckren tries to set Naomi and just a little bit shy. And the Coyotes grab another point. Hickman being, I mean, pretty efficient for the Jays so far. I mean, even with that block, she's still hitting above a 300. So look for them to try to get her involved more in the offense. Sammy Slaughter, you see she has done some work here to Try to loosen the load of Elizabeth Junkie, who was being called upon quite a bit for the Coyotes. And now it's Zimmerman that can't get out of the way of Ellie Bolton, who was coming in to try to get that ball moving. Tied up three apiece. And it's Bolwig again. She's been a good server so far tonight for South Dakota. Difference in that third set. And Akron to Davis. Dumps it over, put back quickly by Madison Harms. Davis again, this time a little bit more thunder, and it's too much for South Dakota. Jays do a great job of their out of system sets, whether it's to the back row or whether it's to an outside. They take aggressive swings, not giving South Dakota you know, a free down ball to play on. You saw Davis a little softer on the first attempt. That time she wasn't wasting it. 4 3 Jays, Pua'a back into serve. And she comes low and nearly gets herself another ace. The Jays will get a chance to set it up. Kostelak pokes it over. Put back into the air by Junkie. And Adams on the side, blocked by the Jays. And Creighton takes a two lead, two point lead. Great setup, just at the right at the end. Glad she had her hands up when she came down. Pua again. Back corner, set up for Adams. She comes across and a little bit, no, it is not long. Touched, who did they give it to? The signal initially to South Dakota, and they will say a touch by the Jays. Yep, I think Naomi the Hickman got her fingers on that one. So here we go again, this time it's Weideman. Davis. Jorgens to Weideman, and again, that cut shot, as you call it, too much for a junkie. Out of bounds, and the Jays grab the point. Jays libero is not, or Ellie Bolton is not playing on the line, which is something you usually see from a defender. If you see, she's set up, yes, on that inside of those hands, but nowhere near that line, so she's going to keep trying to get that cut shot. Bolton stepping in as libero the last two sets now. Grace Nelson started the match in that position. Kostelak down the line. Just wide. Just wide. Point for South Dakota. 
It was, I'll tell you what, from this perspective, and you saw the near side linesman say it was in, but the far side had the view right down the line in it. So with that, the person, the line judge who's down the line will call it on their line, yep. and the corner one will call it on their line. So obviously it was in depth wise. Yes, but not. Just wide. Mm -hmm. See the replay, it was close. Davis, Pua'a, Kostelek. Chance for the Jays as Kostelek got a piece of it, blocked it back, South Dakota. As Zimmerman put it back across, but now it's too low for Pua to get it. And we're tied at six. Well played at the net by both sides. I South Dakota like, just came out with it. I feel like South Dakota has done a better job in these last two sets, obviously winning set three, but it seems like the Jays aren't owning that piece of real estate as much as they were in those first two sets. Nice, Zimmerman. Too much off the hands and it is a point for the Jays. Reinhardt back in, Hickman off. Bolton will serve for Creighton. Zimmerman is just such a low error attacker. She has 15 kills on only three errors. Off of Jay. Davis on the back row. Pua out to Reinhardt. And the freshman comes up just shy and a tie game again at seven. South Dakota's got some fans in attendance. They're liking it back behind the bench. Weidfeld getting her hands up and over, making sure that Reinhardt had nowhere to take that ball. Elizabeth Junkie, big piece of this year's squad, big piece of last year's squad, and she sends it long. Jays back up 8 7. Here's Kostle. Through three sets for Emily. Or for Eric, excuse me, I'm sorry. Four aces. Has done a great job this time. Sends it to that back row. A block again for the Jays on the attempt for slaughter. That was a great block. Looks like she just got up and over quick, dove in. Obviously, she didn't get her feet all the way there. You can see her diving in with both hands, trying to take away that seam. Well played. And Hart's celebrating that one. Nice job. As Van Ekren flanked her. This time, they can't get there in South Dakota with the point. Cutting the lead to one. Grace Nelson will return for the Jays. See the energy, you can feel the energy shifting to South Dakota as well. Every time that they're getting a point, I mean, they're really celebrating. Tight to the net, Van Ekren keeps it alive. Big rip off the hands of South Dakota. And Coach Williamson immediately down to ask the official, was it perhaps that Nelson slid and was close to the net? Nope, I think they are thinking that they didn't get the touch off the block, but I'm pretty sure you could hear that. So they will not challenge it. 10-8 Creighton. Jayla Zimmerman. Sent up, Jurgens. At the net, it's Adams. Jays, a little bit of miscommunication. Finally get it back over. They'll try to get set up on the attack by South Dakota. Nelson, Van Ekren. Jayla Zimmerman again, and South Dakota is there. Watch out. Great job by the Coyotes to keep it alive. Van Eckert cross court as Davis tries to take advantage of the scramble for the Coyotes. Van Eckert again, Davis this time bringing it hard, and it's a point for the Jays. Been there once or twice. That didn't look like it felt too good. And there it is. The replay, slower, I think it hurt more. <laughs> Just didn't get her hands up fast enough. You can tell that those blockers were giving her line, which I'm on the opposite side, so I haven't seen how much they've set up, but those hitters can tell those areas that the blockers are giving them. And so she sees that open and she just rips it down the line. Well, she tried to softly tap it in there before. I thought they did a nice job on that rally of giving themselves time to get set back up. 
11 to 8, set number four. Creighton, we talked about their non conference schedule earlier. And they will have two games against Marquette out of conference. That will be the two games here at Soquel Arena. And then they will travel to Milwaukee to get the conference season started. And here's a look at that. They'll close out February at Marquette, back home against Xavier. And then we'll host DePaul for a pair. And then we'll finish the regular season of the conference schedule at Butler. Close one more match at K-State on, I believe it's March 20th, to finish the regular season out. And then, of course, the Jays, I believe, will host the conference tournament. And who knows what will happen between now and then. So I don't know if there's a, a bubble here at Sokol Arena, but it will be, uh, yeah. They will play the same team in back-to-back -back matches. You see that note there in six of the next seven weekends. And that, of course, will come to an end when they play K-State just one match. This is the first time since 2011 they've played a non-conference opponent on back-to-back -back dates. Cross court by Slaughter, and she'll grab the point for South Dakota. you got to think the Jays will rotate their defense a little bit. Slaughter has been slaughtering <laughs> hey, the Jays defense. If it's on a tee, <laughs> knock it out of the park, kid. <laughs> Zimmerman, Van Eckren, nice back set, Reinhardt, and it's a point for the Jays. It's a big swing from the freshman. Absolutely, that ball was set pretty tight to the net, had hands in her face, she just took it right off that left hand. Yara, six foot three out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. There's that timing aspect again. Some miscommunication between Nelson and Zimmerman like leads to the point for South Dakota. Here's Ballweg again. She's been a handful behind the line. Bolton, Van Ekren. There's Hickman with the big swing. Back to the net they come. Junkie, too much. I'd like to see the Jays blockers set up a little bit more inside to take away that cut shot and force Junkie to do something she's uncomfortable doing. I don't think I've seen her swing down the line once yet today. It does seem that she's been consistently going across. 12-11 now. Bolton again, Van Ekren, Hickman. To the net, Junkie again, straight down. A little bit closer to the line that time. <laughs> as Nelson tried to get down but could not. And another point, we'll tie the game up at 12. Nobody home for the Jays blockers right there. Kind of see Van Eckern trying to dive into that scene, trying to take away because she noticed that Hickman wasn't there. Just not enough. A lot of power behind the arm of Elizabeth Junkie and she has made it felt on the last two points. Bullwick, again Bolton to a knee. Davis dumps it in. Kept alive and then Adams couldn't turn around and focus on the ball quick enough and lost it to the floor. It's a great up by Jurgens, but again, that's pretty hard as a blocker to come down off of that and try to turn and play whatever's at him. Got to get turned around and locate where you're at. As Mahina Pua will try it again. Blocked by the Jays on the attack by Madison Harms. 14-12 Creighton. No way around those forehands at all. Pua goes short. Coyotes keep it alive. Pass by Mahina to Kostelek. And it's a point for South Dakota. And it does just go wide. Lolo Weideman. With a one point deficit. And we've got a equipment adjustment. Addison Jurgens must have she had blood, blood, on blood on that pad. Oh yeah. A little bit. 
I think they're going to slap a bandage on that sucker before they, she pulls it back up. Yep, there's the trainer out to put some tape on it. It's a pre-wrap, I guess, right? Oh, yeah. Equipment slips off sometimes, and it's the floor here at Soakle Arena is the setup. It's the basketball floor right now with both teams competing. I can remember a few jersey changes I had in my day. Women's basketball team at Creighton does play tomorrow at 1 o'clock as Davis can't adjust in time. Nice job by Jay's graphics guy, Wilbur, down there blocking the ball away from his expensive computer. <laughs> They'll sanitize that ball properly afterwards. 14-14 now. South Dakota has tied it up. Hickman looked like she changed her mind on that last ball. It's out of bounds to the Blue Jays on the hit by South Dakota. You could see Mahina Zimmerman was going for that. She was going to play it. It's like looking off a cliff. No, 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 no. Healy Davis is ready. Wow, look at Kostelek load up. She's had a couple of those tonight. That one fantastic. She was ready. It pays to have your hands high. I'm guessing that one was more of an approach. Look how, look how hard she hit. She gets knocked off balance from her own hit. Davis, Jay's up by two. Far side to Adams. Pua ah, can't get the fingers up enough, and it's off of him, out of bounds. Point for the Coyotes. So instruction quickly for Madison Jurgens. Michael Rundy, assistant coach for South Dakota. Jays are ready. Here comes the serve from Johnson, and it's into the net. 17-15 Blue Jays. Service errors have seemed to be the Achilles heel of both the Jays and the Coyotes. 12 service errors from the Coyotes. For the Stop by Wideman getting down. Big swing again by Junkie. Far side to Kostelek. Look at that arm. Through two blockers and still made its way down. It was a heavy swing. Erica Kostelek has been impressive tonight. She has had some of the hardest hits we've seen. She and, of course, the trio of preseason All Big East players. Davis and Zimmerman joining her. Junkie. Talk about hard hits right to the block for the Jays, and it's down for another point. 19 15, and that one was big for Creighton. That'll put a timeout onto the board for South Dakota. Keanu Reinhardt was riled up to that block. Jace playing well, 19-15 your score. There it is again, and Reinhardt has come to play. Jace Volleyball continues next on Jay's video. Run for the Blue Jays. They lead it by 4, 19 to 15. South Dakota trying to stay alive in tonight's match. 
trailing two to one. And let's see what they can come up with out of the timeout. It will be Ellie Bolton serving for the Jays. Floats it over into the awaiting bump of, Bull, of Bullweg. Pua'a keeps it alive, and Bolton tried to keep it alive off the net, and it wasn't enough to allow the Jays to get it across. 1916 now as Junkie will serve for South Dakota. Pretty crucial, isn't it, to find a point after a timeout? Absolutely. They're big momentum shifts. Davis, Pua'a, Zimmerman, a little bit behind her on the pass. Zimmerman gets it across, but it allows Slaughter the opportunity. And now Zimmerman again, and it's a point for South Dakota. Another one of those double contacts, this one on Pua'a. You can see the South Dakota coaches were begging for it, the set prior. 19-17, your score. Jays up by two. South Dakota trying to mount a comeback. Davis. Pua'a leaves it for Kostelek, and it's a block for South Dakota. It's a one-point game, 19-18, Blue Jays. Just need that side out here if you're Creighton. As the momentum out of the timeout has been all South Dakota. And now we will have a substitution as Van Ekren will come in for Hina Pua. Junkie again, deep and out of bounds, and the Jays catch a break. Now 20 to 18, Creighton. And here is Erica Kostelek. See if she can serve a few points for the Jays back there, like she's been doing the rest of the night. Kostelek, as the libero Weideman is there. Davis gets low, can't dig another one. She has pulled off her third career double-double tonight, but that will not go toward that dig total. South Dakota doing a great job in this fourth set, not allowing Creighton to go on runs. That's where they got in trouble the first few sets, and they're doing a great job of getting a good pass and siding out that first ball. So here we go. It is Laura Pedersen, freshman out of Sioux Falls. Serves and a massive kill for the Jays. That'll put them up again by 2, 21 to 19. You call that swing a hut. It's not all the way outside to the pin. They drop it a little bit closer inside, which makes her on the inside of those blocking hands so she can just power it right to that left back. Just like you want that neon line, I need that, I need that dictionary, I'm <laughs> telling you. Zimmerman across. Junkie. Jurgens, Slaughter. Back row to Zimmerman, Van Ekren, Davis. And here we go again. South Dakota is trying to stay alive. Too much by Junkie, point for the Jays. Three point lead, three points away from another win on the season. Jays blockers did a great job on that play. Not, I mean, getting a block is great, but getting a good touch, making it easy for your defense is also crucial as well. Leanne Williamson, the head coach for South Dakota in her seventh season. Trying to will her girls to a comeback. Kill for the Coyotes, and it's 22-20. Here comes Maddie Jurgens. Last year's Summit League setter of the year. Need her to be the server of the year right now, and then she gets an ace. Perfect timing for Jurgens. She comes through with the mid-range, and it's a one-point game and a timeout for the Blue Jays. 22-21, Creighton in front, but South Dakota rallying here at DJ Sokol Arena. Jake Ryan along with Kate Hellman. We have enjoyed this match tonight, and it's been competitive. Jays got the first two, but South Dakota, we know, comes in there. A good squad lost only two players, including Elizabeth Lotion from Omaha. They lost her is the outside hitter last year, and Ann Rasmussen from Wisconsin. So only two players off a 31 and three ball club. You got to think, okay, coming in, you're feeling pretty good about it, and they were feeling pretty good about it. Still are, I'm sure. But you start that season 0 and 2, and the doubts kind of creep into your mind. Uh, swept by Wichita State to start the year, a five-set match against Missouri State, 
But again, you're at Missouri State, and regardless if there's fans or not, it's their building. It's hard to win in somebody else's building, and they're making it a challenge tonight for Creighton to pull this one off. Absolutely. A lot of coaches say, hey, that first game of the year, that's not going to depict how your season's going to go. So you can tell right now they're, South Dakota is a veteran team that they're staying energized throughout this entire match, whether they're down a few points, up a few points. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they can close out this match. By the way, there's a full page of volleyball jargon on Wikipedia, if you're curious. <laughs> I'll have to go look at that. Out of the timeout, here comes Maddie Jurgens. Just served an ace, trying to bring her team back even as Davis brings the thunder. Jurgens to slaughter, back row. Zimmerman saves it, Van Ekren poked over by Reinhardt, and the Jays will have a chance. Set up by Bolton, Van Ekren, and a little bit high for Davis. She'll poke it over, but South Dakota now with a chance. Great rally between the two clubs. Down low, again across. Davis, Van Ekren, back set to Reinhardt, and it's blocked for the point, and the Coyotes have tied it up at 22. Wow. Great defensive play by Lolo Weidman. That was a very impressively short tip by our right side, and she came flying in to keep that ball off the ground. Catching her breath right now is Weidman. Van Ekren, back set again. Reinhardt a little bit off kilter on her steps, and you see the result. It is a lead for South Dakota late in this one. Sammy Slatter proving to be very important for her team, not only on the offensive side, but blocking especially. 23-22, South Dakota in front. Another timeout called for the Blue Jays. Kirsten Bernthal Booth and her staff trying to figure out a solution for South Dakota, who has become red hot and has taken a one-point lead. Unity through adversity is what their team motto is this year, obviously. Everyone facing some sort of adversity with this worldwide pandemic going on and the Jays trying to use that as a rallying point. Just so lucky to be playing. And you, you experienced normal volleyball through your four years. You know, you got to do the bonding, you got to go out, you got to experience everything that college life is part of. And right now for the Blue Jays and, and for the Coyotes, it's they're experiencing class and volleyball. And that's it, you gotta, and, and in between those two, don't get me wrong, you're going to school for something you want to do, right? So class is supposed to be some sort of fun, but really volleyball is, volleyball's the most fun, right? Right, and you always want those outlets. So not only if you're just doing volleyball in school 24 seven, you gotta have an outlet for something and that's really tough for them to do right now. They're restricted on anything they can do. It's also important to like know your teammates outside of volleyball and sure. get to know them, especially chemistry wise. Again, that's pretty tough for them to do right now. So any student athlete playing right now, hats off to you. Coach Bernthal Booth saying the little things are missing. They they can't go bowling, they can't go to the movies. So it's a lot of, a lot of Zoom game nights, I'm sure. <laughs> Van Ekren tries to dump it in. South Dakota's ready for it. They lead 23-22 as Bolton keeps it alive. Van Ekren, Keeley Davis, the Jays need a point in the worst way. And South Dakota doing their best to keep him from getting it. Back row, Nelson. Van Ekren, Davis again, low, and the ball hit long. It's 24-22, and a point away for South Dakota from tying this match up in set four. Jay's a little quiet right now as a team, but you can definitely tell they're not backing off hitting-wise. They're not giving South Dakota the easy way out. They're still swinging hard, which is something great to see from the team. It's been Maddie Jurgens that has Surge the Coyotes ahead. 24-22, set point here in set number four. And it goes long, and the Blue Jays catch a huge break. 24-23 now, and the Jays will send Kiara Reinhardt back to serve the freshman. Let's see if she can get behind it, not under it. As we talked about earlier, Kate, checks that elbow, and here we go. Nice spot in the back row. Here comes South Dakota on the attack. Hickman another block. And that one off the Blue Jays and South Dakota has tied it. 25-23 in set number four. As 
Yes, South Dakota has rallied from 2-0 to tie it up. We're headed to five. We'll be back for it right after this. An exciting night of volleyball at Sokol Arena. The Blue Jays, the Coyotes. It's all here on Jays Video. Right Interesting. there. I mean. Thank you. From DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha, Nebraska, Creighton and South Dakota, you see the score right there. The Jays had this one in hand through those first two. South Dakota, very scrappy though, trying for that first win of the season. Jays looking for their first 3-0 start since 2017. As we bring you back for set number five, Jake Bryan along with Kate Elman. South Dakota has done a number in the last two, and, and we looked at hitting percentage. Kate, you said that's what's been the problem the last two sets. Well, it, it turns out it, that's been the problem the last three sets. Jays were lucky to win set number two. Yeah, they got off pretty easily. Hitting anywhere below 100 right now, you're not going to win very many games like that. And uh, I believe South Dakota has hit above 100 in all the sets except for one. And it was set number two that they hit below, which explains the Jays' win. Nearly starting this set with a point, but South Dakota rallies. Big swing from Kostelek from the outside, and that's into the South Dakota bench. And it's 1-0 Blue Jays here in set number five. I will say, yes, that ball was shanked, but being a libero, there's nothing more I can appreciate than great defense, and that is what I've seen from the Coyotes tonight. Nothing but unbelievable saves. Creighton all time 57 and 30 in five set matches under Coach Booth. Out of bounds. No, it's inbounds. No, it is out of bounds. 2 0 Creighton. I thought I had found that inside corner and I mistook the flag. Jays are another stat that. Crack Sports Information Director Rob Anderson <laughs> sent our way. 94-0 all-time, went up 2-0. Wow. It's also in the notes. If we had done our job, we would have brought that up earlier. Sugar Shack. 2-0 <laughs> the score, and now 2-1. As the Jays can't get in the way of that one, it goes out of bounds off of the arm of Ellie Bolton. 
Sammy Slaughter doing a really good job. She is attacking mainly to that left side of the court, but she's doing a good job of attacking either to the left or the right of the de defender, deep or short. She's not putting it at anybody. Overall in the match, 124 for the Jays, 138 for South Dakota, as far as the hitting percentage goes. Van Ekren trying to set Kostelak up, does so, blocked, and it is in for the point for South Dakota. And we're tied up at two early on in set number five. I always like to see a good five-set match early in the season. It's kind of a gut check for a team, kind of see where you're at. 2-2 two, two early. Ball way. Davis, Van Ekren, back set to Koslek, blocked at the net between Junkie and Harms. And it's a 3-2 South Dakota lead. It's got to be frustrating at us as a hitter, having four hands in your face every time. That's, that's tough to get around. And the Jays are not doing a bad job passing. I mean, sets are there. Ball way again with a 3-2 lead for the Coyotes. Van Ekren tight to the net. Tapped over by, I believe, that was Harms. And now the Jays the other way. And a point for South Dakota. Looked like when Keely Davis went up to attack that ball, her foot stepped on that 10-foot line. She can't approach higher than the point of the net at that. And here's the right. replay. Oh, I will, oh I, it was probably on Allie Van Ekren. Ball leg again. Back row to Bolton, Van Ekren, far side, Kostelek, no stop in that one. And the Jays cut the lead to one. Reinhardt gets a fist bump from Coach Berthold Booth as she checks in. Naomi Hickman has mentioned up in over 300 career blocks in her career tonight. Started the evening with 294. And her last check, she had seven this evening. 4-3 South Dakota, Ellie Bolton. Moves to that back row. Bullwig is there, set up by Harms and spiked home. South Dakota's dangerous when they're in system. I mean, they have that outlet of junkie and slaughter, and when they go to their middles, that's a tough ball to defend. Look well, right time, past their middles. Yep, yeah, and this time it was Harms who caused it for the Jays. 5 3 South Dakota, set five. Trying to find a rallying point are the Blue Jays. Van Ekren, Jayla Zimmerman. Finds it by four, South Dakota in front. And Kostelek will serve. You mentioned that they were quiet at the end of set four. Got to bring that energy, I know. It's hard in a well, quiet gym. And especially the emotions. It's hard, it's hard to feel like, okay, what do we need to do? We're playing so well, and all of a sudden, we're not. Yeah. Set up again, great job by Bolton, digging that out of the floor. And that ball just out of bounds, point to South Dakota. Just wide, Bolton doing a fantastic job at that libero jersey. 6-4 South Dakota. Grace Nelson will check back in for Eric Kostelek. Here's that replay, and it does just go outside that back line. 6-4 Coyotes. This match tied at two after the Jays led it by two. Out of bounds. And the service error on the Coyotes. That's been their Achilles heel tonight. Imagine if they had kept it in control. The errors for South Dakota, 15 to only five aces, 10 to nine for the Jays nearly even. And that's a massive number for service errors. You have to think that coach is going to go back to practice and say, hey, we're serving for two hours, guys. Poked over, kept alive, Van Ekren. Davis gets it across, and it's all set up by Grace Nelson and her quick movements. South Dakota finds it on the right side, though, and it's another point for the Coyotes at 7-5. to five. Junkie putting that ball straight through three defenders. And here is Elizabeth Junkie set to serve with a two-point lead. Throw to Nelson, Van Ekren, Keeley, too much, a big kill. And the Jays just need to run off a couple in a row. They are struggling, finding consecutive points right now. Yeah, I think they're struggling a lot from a hitting standpoint right now, trying to get around a block and have the ball go down. Reinhardt. 
Tapped over in just the right spot for Sammy Slaughter, and that'll bring us to a timeout. We're through the midway point, at least in South Dakota's eyes, of set number five. They lead it 8-6 over the Blue Jays after rallying back to force a set number five here at DJ Sokol Arena. Great volleyball coming up. The remainder of tonight's match right after these on Jay's video. Six, your score, South Dakota, set number five. Creighton Volleyball tonight brought to you by Coca-Cola. Together, tastes better. Jake Ryan along with Kate Elman is a exciting match. It was going the Jays' way, and then all of a sudden, South Dakota rallied in set number three and did it again in set number four. Here they lead it, and it'll be the Jays that have to rally. Down a pair. Midway through. Low serve, dug up by the Jays. Keely Davis finds the spot. Great job by Van Eckeren, put it exactly where she needed to have it. Always a great point to see right out of a timeout. Great pass. Van Eckeren puts it in a great spot. Davis just finishes it. Avoids the blockers as Van Eckeren will serve. And an ace for Allie Van Eckren. Volleyball thick in her family. Her brother currently playing men's volleyball at the University of Hawaii, and then her mom played for the Fighting Illini of Illinois. Her career. The far side, junkie from the mid range and will leave it long. 8-8 eight, eight Jays, now 9-8 Jays. And a huge swing out of the timeout on the midway point. So the Jays didn't have to call it, they just got it because of the media timeout. It's a huge advantage for Creighton right now. Necron again to that far side, nearly came up with another ace. And now South Dakota hits it into the net and it's 10-8 Blue Jays. You see it. It takes a blink of an eye for that momentum to swing the other way. 10 to 8, your score. Creighton, what a comeback. And we mentioned those numbers in fifth sets, and we'll give them to you again. Creighton, 57 and 30 in five sets under Coach Bernthal Booth. That is everywhere. Here at Sokol, and of course, no other coach has been the head coach at Sokol, 12 and 3 overall. 94 and all, all time in the Creighton. That's a record that the Jays are in danger of uh, seeing have a blemish on it. 94 and 0 went up 2 0 in a match. And here's one more note from our guru. Yeah, he, I can't explain it either way. He, he, he is the, he is not only the, he, he's the urban dictionary for sports information. There you go. He, That's a good way to put give it. Give him anything, he'll, he'll give it to you. The only USD win ever, and the Jays lead that all time series 4 to 1 was a five-setter right here at Sokol Arena. So, you put all those numbers together, and it's, it must be payback time for the Jays. They gotta get back for what USD did to them back in 2014. Who played at Creighton in 2014? I did, I don't remember <laughs> losing in 2014. <laughs> well, you got so many wins under your belt, that's the problem. Shoot. It's tough to remember the losses when you've got so many wins that you're, exactly. you're, you're always counting those instead. Well, there's a few losses I remember. <laughs> Out of the timeout <laughs> called by South Dakota, the Jays with Van Eckerd serving lead it 10 to 8. Wideman gets low, digs it out. Slaughter at the net. And South Dakota will get another chance. 
Junkie puts it over. Davis, the initial touch. Over to Van Eckert. Big swing, and it's touched. No, it's not touched. Creighton thinks it was, and Coach Booth will challenge it. I was almost positive that it was touched. Not only did I thought there was a touch here, you saw the reaction from the Jays players. So we'll see on the review as we turn to the screens. 10-9 Jays. They actually, those players on the bench have the best look at it. Here it is again. Kostelek on the far side. Big swing. And look at the angle. Oh. I'll tell you what, from the net cam, it does look like the hand, watch the hand. Looks like it just goes over Jurgen's fingers. I, it's close. So close. Does it not change directions there? Her finger. Why, her look finger. at her look at her middle finger move to the side. I, I don't know. That's what you said you're looking for, right? Yeah. Maybe she's just got double, she's double hinged in that finger and she can move it at will. <laughs> Yeah. She she worked it out matrix style to avoid the ball. I don't know if they'll be able to definitively definitively turn that over though. Costs like such power. It's a heavy arm. It's all part of the bionic knees that she's got right now. Hey, she's got an advantage right here. Yeah. She's outfitted like the big poppy of the Jays volleyball team. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen a volleyball player with a double knee brace. Remember, Football players, yeah. There is an extra challenge in this fifth set when you get there. So three initially, an extra challenge delivered here, and the point is not overruled. It will be South Dakota serve down just one, ten to nine. That would have been a huge swing if the Jays had gotten that up three. And inconclusive yet again. That's the third time we've seen it here tonight. That just not enough to see for the official to overturn their call. Bolton on the back row. Van Eckeren, Davis, and she gets the best of South Dakota. Jurgens couldn't put it in the right direction, and it goes to the South Dakota bench. And now it's a 11 to 9 lead for the Jays. Great swing right through the hole in that block. Jurgens was there, so was Junkie, and you saw neither one of them could react positively to the ball. Blocked at the net by Hickman. They'll bring it again to Davis. Van Eckren. Zimmerman comes across, and now a spot found and delivered by South Dakota. One point game again. Slaughter's done a very good job this whole night of mixing up her shots. You know, going all out on one, hitting a cut shot on the other, tipping it, roll shotting it. She's a very deceptive outside hitter. And here comes Ballweg. She has been a thorn in the Blue Jays' side all evening. Comes across. Bolton leaves it close to the net. Van Eckren handles it. It is Hickman with the attempt. And now Junkie from mid-range. Davis out of bounds, and we are tied at 11. You see the Jays rallying each other with Bullwig set for another serve. 11-11 here in set five. Very deliberate is Bullwig getting set up across the net. Bolton's there. Van Eckren, quick set behind her. To Zimmerman and Zimmerman has it blocked again at the net. It's been Madison Harms and crew and a timeout for the Jays down one here at DJ Sokol Arena. What a turn of events. The call that you thought may have gone Creighton's way, given him a three point lead. Instead of that, it was cut to two or one. And now without that point, the Jays see South Dakota rally and lead it by. A single point, 12 to 11. The hitting percentage has steadily gone down for the Jays in the match. 103 I'd, right now. I'd say that's, for this match, their biggest downfall. I mean, current set right now, we're hitting a, or the Jays are hitting a negative .056. I mean, you're not going to win a match. Granted, with a negative 
hitting percentage, they're still, you know, right in the game, 11-12, so. Well, and it's service errors that have created issues for South Dakota. So you see blemishes on both sides that if you can just shore those up one way or the other, you're going to get yourself a win. And that's why we're so even right now, because neither team has really figured it out. Blue Jays will have to figure it out. Down a point, out of the timeout. Zimmerman, Davis, Hickman, Kostelek, Van Ekren, and Bolton. It is Brooklyn Volwig that serves for South Dakota. 12-11, Coyotes in front. Volwig again, Bolton, same spot. Van Ekren, far side, Zimmerman has it blocked. It's Bolton that keeps it alive. Van Ekren again to Zimmerman. Diving to the floor and digging it out was Bolwig. South Dakota attacking Van Ekren. She'll go backside this time to Kostelek. And the Jays tie it at 12. Puts it down without fail. That was a great approach. Great swing. Got what they needed. You saw on the far side Zimmerman meeting resistance on that net. This time Kostelek, a beautiful back set, finds an opening. Ellie Bolton, Libero here and sets three through five for the Jays. Sends it right across, nearly an ace, but a diving attempt by Bullweg. And there is a big kill to put South Dakota back in front, 13-12. That was an important swing for Junkie right there. Passers didn't really do their job. Uh, Jurgen's just trying to keep the ball up. And she has a great out of system swing on that. That was Junkie's 70th attempt tonight. Van Ekren to Zimmerman. It is in for the Jays, and it's tied again at 13. It's like a hitting duel, just going back and forth. Here comes Erica Kostelek. Four aces tonight, setting a career high. Get a couple more, and the Jays can go home winners. Finds a spot, it's Bullweg. Jurgens. here's Junkie. Out of bounds. Yes, it's a point to the Jays, and they take a lead. Just long on the hit by Junkie. Will they challenge it? Why not? You got him to burn, and it's a very important point. On the other side, they've, they've got to challenge it, don't they? That close? You have to. That close and this close of a match. And it gives you a chance to talk to your team as well. Here's the replay from Jays' video. Junkie again, her 71st attempt. Wow, that was close. Yeah. That might be going the other way. And you see immediately Maddie Jurgens and teammates saying, nope, nope, nope. You got to review that coach. Coach Booth just getting out of the way. And that might be a big reversal. You see Ellie Bolton conveniently in the way on this replay. Yeah. There it was, bouncing. Did it hit the line, though, is the question. And I'm not sure that that's conclusive from that angle. Again. Ooh, right there. It looks like it might have nicked it. But did it? I mean. Yeah. But conclusively, can you see what I'm saying? <laughs> that's been my problem a lot. I'm usually. Now, there's a better view of it right there. That looks like it does catch the line on that view. Yeah. Good news is, Kate, we're, it's not up to us to decide. Thank goodness. We'd be, we'd be 0 for 4 at this point. I mean, what a hit from Junkie. That was a great shot. Absolutely. You can even tell she took something off of it to put it where she wanted it. Look at Zimmerman duck out of the way right here. Jayla just <laughs> bailing out. Nope, no thank you. Again, oh man, that is so close. I wouldn't be surprised if they do reverse this one. And that's going to create a problem for Creighton. So here it is, the call from the official review. And it's in. South Dakota with a humongous point as they try to grab win number one of this season. That's a big momentum shift. And the incred incredulous look from Coach Bernthal Booth. That was the clearest view we had all night on any of the replays. And unfortunately for the Blue Jays, 
It turns the other way. So now it's South Dakota up by a point, 14 to 13. Checking in will be Maddie Johnson, or will she? They will wait for the official to turn and be ready. Looks like she's checking for her next server just to make sure they're not out of rotation. And here comes Maddie Johnson. One point to win it for South Dakota. Jays would love a rally. Grace Nelson on this near side right in front of us. And a timeout for Creighton with a one-point deficit late in this one. They want to talk about match point for South Dakota. And here's another look at that play right on the line, Kate. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Yeah. In fact, it might have. Yeah, that clearly hits the line. Yeah. And again, if we had your neon sidelines. It would have lit up that it, it was in. I'm telling you, it's it, a great idea. It, it would have. And I tell you what, that's the next great idea. And it's going to come to fruition here at Sokol Arena. Be a millionaire. OK. Well, just remember the little people on your way to the top. I'm going to manifest that right now. <laughs> Out of the timeout for the Jays. Grace Nelson, Van Eckren, Reinhardt, Davis, Zimmerman, and Bolton, the libero. Maddie Johnson will serve with Weidenfeld and Junkie at the net. Jurgens, Weideman, and Bullweg for South Dakota. 14-13, South Dakota trying to rally back. It's something that's never been done here at Sokol Arena. When the Jays were up 2-0. Popped up too long. Jays keep it alive, and it's over. South Dakota rallies back as they had two match points against Missouri State last week go the other way and finally get their first win of the season. Creighton suffers their first defeat of this spring 2021 season and wow, unreal comeback by South Dakota. They showed a lot of metal and now these two teams will go at it again on Sunday afternoon. I'm excited to see that match. I mean, an unfortunate end to this one, but I mean, you gotta give credit to both, both teams. That was a very, very exciting game to watch. Absolutely, so South Dakota will celebrate here on the Jays' home floor. The Blue Jays will try to do it on Sunday at the Sanford Coyote Sports Center in about two hours north and slightly west of the Omaha area. And you can catch that game, I believe, courtesy of USD. Your final score again, the Jays upended by South Dakota in a fantastic three-set rally. You see the scores there, two points all the way home, no extra points needed, and South Dakota now one and two on the season. The Blue Jays drop to two and one, and they'll do it again Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and hopefully you'll get a Blue Jay win when that time comes. For Kate Elman, for the Jays video staff, I'm Jake Ryan, your final again. South Dakota 3, Creighton 2, here from Sokol Arena in Omaha, Nebraska. This has been Blue Jay Volleyball on Jay's Video.